Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Take absolute control, Lord. Let your name be exalted. Speak to us, O oh God, in a language that is plain enough for every one of us to understand. Bless every one, O God, especially the mothers, for this is their day. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will hear them specially today. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good. All the time, God is good. Amen. Are the women of excellence here today? Where are the women of excellence? The mothers of excellence. Hallelujah. GROBC mothers are mothers of excellence. GROBC women are women of excellence. In the name of Jesus. Because they've got the excellent spirit. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for our women? For these wonderful mothers. The potential mothers and the already mothers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want us to prophetically do this. Especially the expectant mothers. Is that not what they call them? And then those who are potential mothers. You are not a mother yet, but you are a potential mother. Amen. Amen. Including those who are already mothers. But especially those who are potential mothers. Because the Bible says that, let empty hands praise the Lord. Even the barren say, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? And that is able to bring down mountains for you. That mountain of barrenness will go down. Amen. That mountain of childlessness or whatever is hindering your fruitfulness will go down in the name of Jesus. Amen. That as you declare it and proclaim it by the grace of God, God will turn things around Amen. to work all together for your good. Amen. That as you decree, so will it be. You are not a mother yet, but you will soon be a mother. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He said, I have not even married. My dear, it can even happen tomorrow. Our God is able. There is nothing that is too hard for him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So all mothers in the house and those online, shout it loud. I am a mother of excellence. I have God an excellent spirit. I have excellent children. I have, excellent children. I have wonderful children. I have, wonderful children. I have intelligent children. I have intelligent children. My, children My children are blessed. They cannot be cursed. They cannot be cursed. My, children My children are on top. They will fulfill destiny. Will fulfill In, the In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My children are the best. Are the best. They are distinguished. Distinguished in everything they do, anywhere they find themselves, they are distinguished in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have healthy children. I have godly children. I have wonderful children. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, shout amen. Shout it louder, amen. And put your hands together for the king of kings that has made that possible. That has blessed you with these wonderful children. Bless you with a wonderful home. Bless you with a wonderful marriage. Bless you with wonderful fathers. And bless you with wonderful husbands. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I need to do that just in case I forget to pray later. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, Proverbs 31. We're going to talk about women and mothers. The first that comes to your mind is Proverbs 31. Hallelujah. But very soon. Amen. Praise God. For as long as you are born again, as long as you are a child of God, the spirit of the living God quickens your mortal body. And when that spirit quickens your mortal body, it means that it gives life to that body. And because there's life in that body, that body will do well. 
In the name of Jesus. Anything that was wrong before you knew Christ is rectified. In the name of Jesus. It's by faith. It's by faith. Not by any man's power. It's by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. He is able to do all things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All things are possible. Things are possible. Not only with God Almighty, not only with Jesus Christ, not only with the Holy Spirit, all things are also possible with you. I hope you believe that. The Bible says, all things are possible to him that believes. Do you believe? If you believe, all things are possible. Nothing is too hard for God to do, and nothing is too hard for you to achieve. All you need to do is just believe, set your mind on it, pursue it, and it shall come to pass. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless our women. Say, you are blessed amongst women. JRBC women, all those that are online and those that are even here now, you are blessed amongst all women. Which means you are distinguished. Because you are excellent. An excellent spirit has been found in you. Let me tell you more things about this woman of excellence, or if you like, the mother of excellence. I'm looking at the excellent Christian mother. I want to narrow it down to Christian mothers. Amen. Excellent Christian mothers. They are women of excellence. They are wives of excellence. They have substance, great substance, high quality women of God. Let me tell you a few things about them. They cannot and will never fail. These women, because of the excellent spirit in them, they are are built for success. Amen? Amen? An excellent mother is wired, calibrated, for success. She's industrious. She's blessed and highly favored. Both by God and by men. She's distinguished in the society. She's hardworking. She's diligent. This woman, she stands out anywhere she goes. And her character is her beauty. Hallelujah. This excellent woman, she's a no-nonsense woman when it comes to tolerance of evil. She does not tolerate evil. She can't be cheated. She can't be destroyed. She's not likely to be defeated in any way, in any sphere, because she's got the Spirit of God in her. Luke chapter 1, verse 42. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Every woman of excellence will have excellent children because you will give birth to your kind. So that's why no matter what is happening in the life of your children right now, just relax. It's going to turn around for good because they are excellent children. They are wonderful, wonderfully made and fearfully made by God. Daniel was a man of excellent spirit. The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. Daniel chapter 5, verse 19. Sorry, verse 12. Daniel 5, 12. It says that for as much as an excellent spirit was found in who? In Daniel. As much as an excellent spirit was found in Daniel. What else was found in Daniel? Because of this excellence, knowledge, that knowledge, understanding, interpreting of dreams. (laughs) And it says... Showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in this same Daniel. Hallelujah. And when he was called to interpret to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he did not fail. An excellent woman is like that. She will always deliver. She's always on point in the name of Jesus. She's guided by the Lord, led by the Lord, by the Spirit of the Lord. She does not confuse the voice of the Holy Spirit. She knows the voice of the Holy Spirit because she communes with the Holy Spirit all the time. That's why she's excellent. Praise God. Daniel chapter 6, again, also testifies to that. Verse 3. Then 
this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Hallelujah. Because an excellent spirit was found in Daniel. He did not do anything less but excellence. He delivered. You will always deliver, excellent woman. You will always deliver. Whether by day or by night, you will deliver. In the name of Jesus. And it says that because of this excellent spirit in him, they considered him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they not only consider him, they placed him above other men. That's why the scripture says that you are blessed amongst women. So which means promotion is coming to you. Amen. You'll be set above all others. They'll be looking for who, we, who can we send, who we occupy this position. And no other name will come to mind but your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And when they're deciding whether who, who and who should be allowed to remain in, in this country or your place of abode, your name comes to mind. And God will give them a dream. Whoever is in charge, and they'll keep looking for your file. They don't know why. They can't explain it. They just keep looking for your file. And they will turn and turn and turn until your file will be on top. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what you have been considered for. Your file will be on top. Amen. You will get it. In the name of Jesus. Because the excellent spirit is in you. You will triumph. You will excel above all others by the grace of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Don't forget what Romans 8 says in verse 11. That if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, it will quicken your mortal body. Every cell in your body will be quickened by this same spirit of God. All you need to do, like the song we, we rendered earlier on, is just to believe. If you can just believe, it will be possible. It will happen. You think, <laughs> oh, I'm just reciting. No, I'm praying with all my heart and I believe it. But all you need to do is to claim it with your faith. And it shall be yours in Jesus' name. How God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Acts of Apostles chapter 10, verse 38. God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with what? Power. My prayer is that God will anoint you all over again. Amen. Women of God, may God anoint you. Amen. Men of God, may God anoint you. Whatever we are saying to the women, we are saying to the men, we are saying to the children, everyone that will believe, because you have identified with the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty has anointed you with the Holy Ghost and with power. So you'll be able to do good with all your life in the name of Jesus. Like we said last week, you'll be able to raise the dead. You can heal the sick. That power is in you. So we are believing God that these women of excellence in this church will begin to execute these things in their real life. That you begin to work miracles. That you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Anyone that you see, you say, can I pray with you? Is it okay to pray with you? And you just pray, just holding the hands with this person. You see currents from heaven. Anointing will flow in the name of Jesus. Some time ago, some years ago, a lady asked me to go with her to go pray for her husband's brother in the hospital. The leg was suspended with a cast. So I went there to pray with her, to pray with him. And as we prayed, I felt something move, like, like warm. I felt it where I, the leg, that part of the leg I held. So I just prophetically prayed and rebuked it out in the name of Jesus. And I left. That's all. So once you pray, just that is what we call prayer of faith. You pray, believe it, it is done. No going back. Don't think about it. It's done. That is it. Settled. Go. And that's what I did. The next time I saw her in the, in the church, what happened? She gave the testimony that shortly after, when it was the next day or so, the man was discharged, that the man testified, said to her, that as this man prayed, he felt something moving in his legs. And then 
a little while later, the pain was gone. That's what God can do. By faith. By faith. Decree it. Every one of us has got the power. We've got it. But the only thing is that when we do not develop this power, it remains dormant. But the more you study the word of God, women of God, excellent mothers, you must study the word of God. There is no other place where the power is. The power is in the word of God. Study the word of God. Chew the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Digest the word of God. Think deeply on the word of God. Believe the word of God. Speak the word of God. And act upon the word of God. And you will see miracles. They will happen. It is possible. Amen. Amen. I'm believing God that every woman in this church will be a miracle worker. Amen. Never again are we going to say there is no miracle in the church when you are there. How can there be no miracle? When you, with an excellent spirit, you are in the church. And you say the church is not growing. How can? So that's why I see this church skyrocketing. I see this church going higher and higher because we've got women, not only women, we've got men of excellence because we all got the spirit of excellence in us, the Holy Spirit of God. You decree it, it will be established. You lay hands on the sick, it will recover. Your anointing, corporate anointing, will make sure that the kingdom of God is advanced in the name of Jesus. How is this woman able to attain this spirit of excellence? I've just told you. You must be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of excellence. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit, not only filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. So people are just spiritual, but they are not led. You must be led, not only spirit filled, you must be led by the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit and listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. And whatever it tells you to do, do it. May you never confuse that spirit with any other spirit. May you never confuse the voice of the Holy Spirit with the voice of man in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. I'll be reading it from the Amplified Bible. Proverbs 31. Are we there? Proverbs 31. Amplified. Our technical desk might not have Amplified. I know that. Are we ready? Verse 10. An excellent woman, one who is spiritual. Who is the excellent woman? Spiritual. The one who is what? Spiritual. Somebody said me. I like that. That is good. In Jesus' name. An excellent woman, one who is spiritual. Capable. Intelligent. And virtuous. Who is he who can find her? Yeah? Men in the house. Who is he who can find her? I believe, God, that you have found yours. You have found that woman of excellent spirit. Who is spiritual. Who is capable. Who is intelligent and virtuous. Hallelujah. These are women of excellence. I pray for the youth, the youths, the male youth. One day you will get married. If you are not already on the, on, the, on the way to. May you be led by the Holy Spirit to find that woman of excellence that is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous in the name of Jesus. And I pray that every woman in this church that is named by the name of the Lord God Almighty, wherever you are, even online, every woman that believes in Christ Jesus, I pray that God will make you spiritual. He will give you the strength and the grace to be spirit-led. That you be capable, intelligent, and virtuous in Jesus' name. So that when, they, when your own man is looking for you, he will not mistake you. He will, not, he will find you. He will see you in the name of Jesus. Like the Bible says, if Jesus comes, whenever he comes back, will he find faith on the earth? It's the same way, when your husband comes, will he find you? Where will he find you? That's why, beloved, 
for those who have not yet married, spinsters or those believing God for marriage, the best place to find a good man with excellent spirit is in the Lord. The best place to find him is in the Lord. Not in the church, not in the club, not in the market, not at work, but in the Lord. I hope you know there's a difference between in the Lord and in the church. That's why some people go to church and become members of the church because they feel, I want a very good woman. Or I want a very virtuous woman. Or I want a very good husband. And they believe it should be, they should be found in the church. Good. They are right. God bless, God bless the church. Amen. And that is how it should be. Amen. That is how it should be. But we know in the church, many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Amen. That is why you, as a single woman or a single lady or a single girl, believing God for a good husband, you must be a good woman. You want an excellent man, you must be an excellent woman. Get ready, get yourself prepared. Like, hey, you want a virtuous woman. You want a wonderful woman, a glorious woman as a man. Now, are you ready for her? How wonderful are you? How loving are you? How caring are you? How intelligent are you? How anointed are you? How faithful are you? Don't you know your faithfulness in, in the Lord will make God to be faithful to us, you? He said, draw my nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. So if you draw near unto God, he draws near to you. Whatever you ask, at times without you asking, he draws them to you. Amen. Amen. Solomon offered the Lord a thousand baht offering. In the night, God came down. Not rain. Not snow. God came down. And said, Solomon! What do you want? What do you want me to do for you? In essence, that offering was just too much. That sacrifice was just too much. Others were offering a sacrifice, but Solomon offered 1,000. It takes a lot of effort to render a burnt offering to the Lord. A lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of strength, a lot of things go into this. But Solomon did not only give one, he gave 1,000. And in the night, God came down. If you learn to live a life of sacrifice, excellent woman, you should be a woman of sacrifice. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your energy. You sacrifice your resources just for your family, just for God's work and God's children. I tell you, you never go unrewarded. What you did not even ask for, God will give it to you. Solomon, what do you need? What do you want? What do you want? No delay. Immediately God answered. God responds faster to sacrifices. Sacrifices make God to respond faster than prayers would do. Whether sacrifice or praise or any kind of sacrifice, he will answer you speedily. That very night, there was no delay. Solomon, maybe somebody is listening to me. All you just need now is to live a life of sacrifice. Number one, the first sacrifice you need to give to God is yourself. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves as living sacrifice. He said, that is your reasonable service. The best service you can ever render to God is to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Not that you are going to burn yourself or to kill yourself. No, that means you surrender all to him. You surrender, you live for him. That you can say like Paul, the life that I live now is no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. That you know what I say is my life. And once I, I determine what I'll do with my life, it's my life. Or you say, it's my money. Uh, no, nobody can detect what I'll do with my money. It's my money. Good. I understand. You work the money. But God gave you the strength to work that money. He gave you the wisdom to work that money. He gave you that business. He gave you that job. The school that you went to, the college you attended, the university you attended, was not by your power, neither was it by your might. It was by the grace of God. Many went with you to that university and did not finish. 
for one reason or the other, they didn't complete the course. Then you completed it, and you think it was by your power? No, it was not by your power. It was not by your might, but by the Spirit of the living God. That thing he has blessed you with is for, he, for, you, for you to use to his glory. That is your calling. That is what you should use to glorify the name of the Lord. You shouldn't separate that from the Lord. That your home is God's home. That your business is God's business. That your job is God's job. That your career is God's career. He gave it to you. Be a good steward. He gave it to you. He blessed you with it. So you must use it to glorify him. You can't separate your business from God. You can't separate your family from God. You can't separate your career from God. You can't separate your children from God. They are all or we are all given to you. Jesus himself said, no one can get anything except be given to him from, the, from God Almighty. Promotion does not come from any other direction but from God Almighty. God promoted you. Why he's blessing you, you must bless him back and bless his children, bless his work, bless mankind. Be a generous woman. Excellent woman, you should be generous. Live a life of generosity. Live a life of generosity. And then, good measure, press down, shake and dagger. God will cause men and women to give unto you in the name of Jesus. An excellent woman who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Who is he who can find her? Man, you are blessed. To have found such a woman, you are blessed. I found God. I found one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when you are searching, don't search with your eyes closed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you won't see how. Especially the virtuous ones. They are, they are not easily found on the surface. They are like gold. You have to dig deep, deep, deep before you can get. And how else can you do that except by the help of God? You just need God to help you. That's why as a man, if you need a virtuous woman, a woman of excellence, be spiritual. Amen. Amen. Be in service to the Lord. Inside the church and outside the church. And God will bring the right woman to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Her value is more precious than jewels. I will just read through and I will just give a summary. Her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far above rubies. The excellent woman. You remember verse 10? An excellent woman. That is the beginning. An excellent woman. Her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far above rubies or pearls. Verse 11. The heart of her husband trusts in her. Amen? Amen. We secure confidence. The heart of her husband does what? Trust in her. Husbands, are you here? Praise God. Can I have a wave offering, husbands? Praise God. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. So, you've got a virtuous woman. The Bible is telling you here that by virtue of her virtuousness and her excellence, you should trust her. Amen. Trust her. Do your best to trust her. Thank you very much. Trust her. That's an excellent one. That's an excellent woman. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you must trust her. But virtuous woman or excellent woman, what will make the man to trust you? Is it by pastor commanding him to trust you? Or by singing the song on trust. No, it's not like that. Trust is earned. You earn it. You earn it. You earn it. Amen. Amen. Same way, man, how can your woman trust you? You have to earn it. How do you earn it? Number one, trust and obey God. He said, there are so many things we pray for that we don't even need to pray for. And so many things we don't get because we don't do what? We don't trust and obey. If we can only trust and obey him 
as a man, you trust and obey him. That woman will trust and obey you. As a woman, you trust and obey God. That man will trust and obey you. Amen. Praise God. So, when you trust God, God will also make men to trust you. That's number one. The number two, where you can earn the trust is by you being faithful. Being faithful. Do what is trustworthy. Do what is trustworthy. I'm not talking of eye service or pretense. With, from your whole heart, do it. Love. Submit to him with your whole heart. And you see, he will learn to trust you. And don't tell lies. So people feel that telling lies is wisdom. They say black lie, white lie. So when you tell a lie to escape judgment or punishment, they think that is white lie. Lie is lie, beloved. There is no color. Black, yellow, red. Lie is lie. So when you tell lies, it is very difficult to trust you again. So do your best. I know it's not by power, it's not by might. We need God's grace. But do your best to speak the truth. And own up if it is not true. Amen. That will also tell a lot about your integrity. For instance, you promise him or her both ways that you are going to do something. And then you are not able to do it probably because of one disappointment or the other or human nature. You are not able to do it. You should apologize. Or tell the person ahead of time, sorry, I thought I would be able to make it. But for this reason, I'm not able to make it. Don't just take it for granted. Well, and just let it go like that. Let the person know I'm sorry that I could not. Or ahead of time, I thought I would be able to make it. I thought I would be able to make it. I'm very sorry for one reason or the other. This, 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 this. You might not even need to go into explanation. That I don't think I'll be able to make it. It tells a lot about your integrity. That you won't care about that person. Don't stand the person up. It's not good. It's not right. Don't stand the person up. But eventually, you had no time to apologize to tell the person ahead of time. Immediately after, call. Give a call. Thank God today we have handsets everywhere. Give a call or a text. I'm very sorry I could not make it. It was for some reasons I could. For things I could not. For unforeseen circumstances. Put it on the head of unforeseen circumstances. Yeah? Yes, just put it on the head of unforeseen circumstances. For unforeseen circumstances, I could not. Please, I'm sorry. It tells a lot. It will make people to trust you. What comes to my mind now was, one day I was teaching a classroom. I was teaching a classroom. I taught, this, I taught biology in a secondary school. So I was teaching the classroom. I taught. Then later, when I studied further, on that topic, I realized that I did not give the right information. So the next class, I corrected it. And I told them, this, 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 I want to correct this. This is not really completely true. And I now explain more to them based on the new things I've learned. Amen. Amen. And do you know what? It was so clear and loud. I heard a student in the class, saying, this is why I love this man. Why? Because I corrected myself, and I told them what I told you was wrong. This is the right one. So next time I tell, I will tell them anything, they'll believe, because they know that if it's not right, I will come to tell them that it's not right. They'll believe it. Amen. Amen. Don't be, oh, if I tell them now, they will not trust me again. No, they will trust you because they know you have integrity. An excellent woman is a woman of integrity. You must have integrity. That is where you can be trusted. Be trustworthy, beloved. Amen. Praise God. He said, the heart, verse 11, the heart of her husband trusts her. If a man trusts you with his heart, what is left? What is left? Because out of the abundance of the heart comes the issues of life. If the man trusts you with his heart, what is left? 
The heart is the, the main engine. If the heart is gone, what is left in the body? Just carcass. Empty. And it's not trusting with that heart. Please don't break that heart. But I know that you, because you are an excellent woman, you will not betray that confidence and trust of your man in Jesus' name. May God give you the grace and strength not to do so in Jesus' mighty name. The heart of her husband trusts her with secure confidence and he will have no lack of gain. She comforts. Are you following the qualities of a, of a, of a virtuous or a, an excellent woman? What does she do? She comforts, she encourages, and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. She will do him good all the days of her life. Why will he not love you? And that's why at times when people see this man behaving some way towards you, they say this one is just tied to the apron of the woman. It's because you don't understand. Her, his heart trusts her completely. She's trustworthy. She has earned it. So why are you jealous? She has earned it. And whatever she wants the man to do, the man does. Why? Because she has earned it. She has, she's trustworthy. She loves him with all her heart. She encourages him. She speaks to the man in him instead of speaking to the child in him. When you always run the man down, tell you every little mistake, you, you, you pounce on him and all those things, you are talking to the child in him. And that is the child you always see. But when you learn to speak to the man in him, encourage the man in him, you will see the man in him. Praise God. So that is why you see everything. He does not want a fly to perch on that woman because she she. Is trustworthy. She has integrity. She loves him. She encourages him. She comforts him. Amen. And her wish and her everything she does is just to do him good all the days of her life. May God give you the grace, woman, to do all this in Jesus' name. And by the time you earn the trust of your, of your husband and the confidence of your husband and the heart of your husband, anyone that will come against you, God will judge them. In the name of Jesus. And verse 13. She looks for wool and flax and works with willing hands in delight. Not grumbling. In delight. She is like the merchant ship abounding with treasure. She brings her household's uh, food from far, afar off. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maids. She considers a field before she buys and accepts it, expanding her businesses or her business prudently. With her profits, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. Verse 17, she equips herself with strength. Amen? Amen. I need to also concentrate and emphasize on this. Verse 17, she equips herself with strength, spiritual strength. Amen? Amen. Mental strength. Physical fitness for her God-given task. Amen. Amen. How does she equip herself? How does an excellent woman equip herself? How does she equip herself? Spiritually. Studying the word of God. Praying. You must always be on your knees. You, are, you must be prayerful. An excellent woman is a, man, is a woman of prayers. Full of prayers. Because she knows if there's anything, any way to direct things in life is by prayers. How can you also, that also will help you. Although prayers alone will not make that man to really trust you like that. But prayer helps. But prayer alone is not, is not enough. The Bible says you must be of good character. Amen? Amen? If you pray and pray and pray heaven down and you have bad character, you nullify everything. Instead of the prayer working, he's seeing the bad character in you. And that puts him off. So you must have good character not just the adorning of yourself, braided hair and all those things. The Bible is not against braided hair, but it says that your character is what is more important than all that you use to beautify yourself. Praise God. Amen. She equips herself with strength, spiritual strength. And mentally, she equips herself. Develop yourself. Amen. Amen. Develop yourself. Study. If you can't study, listen to tapes. Watch what watch. watch Watch uh, videos. Most of the time, what 
some people do is they watch home videos. I'm not against watching of home videos. They watch films upon films upon films. But when it's time for the word of God, what do they tell you? Hey, change the channel and let's watch. Let's listen to the word. It's like I'm just coming from church now. We have heard the some, some, uh, word of God. Then you will now watch uh, whatever title you call that film. They watch a worldly uh, film, part one. Oh, they must see this end. Oh, my God. Oh, my. They put part two. And it's, so, it's worse today. All of them are both American movie, Nigerian movie. All movies, they now have seasons. Season one, episode one, episode two, episode 12, episode 15. Season two, episode one. And you will watch all the episodes, season one, all the episodes, season two, all the episodes, season three, until you finish it, you won't rest. Oh, I wish we can also channel the same attitude, the same strength to the word of God. You'll be a woman of signs and wonders and miracles. Every word you speak will be powerful. Am I against you watching films? No. But select the films you watch. But more so, meditate more on the word of God. Give place to the word of God. Even if it's just music. Music are not problem. Oh, oh my God. Uh, Time, time is, time is, time is fast spent again. Music is now is the, in fact, it's one of the the worst culprits in this music, music because devil knows the importance of sound. Spirits are transmitted through sounds. Even the late Michael Jackson confessed this. He, 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 he attested to this when he was asked the question. He said there's a spirit, I don't know the spirit he mentioned, he said the more the people listen to this music, the more that spirit goes into them. That's what he said. So the more you listen to that music, the spirit behind that music, the spirit will now penetrate to the person. And then you see that music will, be, will talk in your, your mind and your brain. Years to come, you will still be remembering that music. So that's how spirits are transmitted. They can be transmitted through sound. Praise God. Amen. So, mind the music you listen to. Listen to Christian music. We have Christian gospel. We have, we have, we have reggae. We have uh, uh, R&B. We have all of them in Christian music. They are there. They are there. Listen to them and your spirit will be elevated. You become spiritual. So by the time you listen to them, before you know, you start speaking in tongues. You go into prayers. You, you want to study the word of God. You are moved. Let the enemy come in that, in, that, in that euphoria. In that state, you find yourself. Let the enemy come. You see, you start you praying, they will be tumbling. In the name of Jesus. Please, women of God, children of God, excellent women, let's give heed to spirituality. Study more of the word of God. Praise God, worship God, listen to what, the music that will elevate your soul and your spirit. And your children, you're always exposed to all this music. That's how they're going to grow. That same spirit will not be. And you'll be wondering why are these children not listening to the word of God? Why can't they behave well? Because you are exposing them to wrong music and to wrong things that they hear. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us. May God help us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace made sufficient for us. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone that is not born again here, I want to lead you to Christ. And anyone online, you want to give your life to Christ. Now that you know that the first prerequisite of being an excellent mother or excellent woman is to be born again. You need the Holy Spirit to guide you. Then surrender your life to Christ. It's very easy to do. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior in your heart. Believe it. And then with your mouth, confess it. And dedicate yourself to the hands of God. I can lead you if you want. Say after me. Lord Jesus, I, be I believe in you. You are king of kings. You are lord of lords. You died for my sins. And I know you were, you were crucified. But you resurrected. And you're coming back again. So I surrender my life to you. Please take control. When you come again, may I be found amongst the the saints that will be raptured. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I commit your children who have just given their lives to you into your hands, Lord. Guide them, protect them.
lead them. When you come to rapture your church, let them be found among the saints to be raptured. Here on earth, before then, give them a hundred folds. Guide them and direct them. Protect them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And for the rest of us, O oh God, I pray that the power of God by the Holy Spirit will continue to guide us and direct us in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God Almighty, I pray committing every woman, every mother into your hands, Lord, that you make them spiritually sound in the name of Jesus, mentally sound in the name of Jesus, physically sound and fit in Jesus' mighty name. Every sickness, everything that is hindering them from being fit, I decree that such be dissolved and destroyed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Give them victory. Lord Jesus, make them prayerful. Help them to be diligent. The strength and grace to be industrious. I let it abide with them. I rebuke the spirit of laziness, unnecessary procrastination out of their lives in the name of Jesus. May they not be found amongst gossips. May they not be found amongst backbiters. They will not stand in the way of sinners. Now will they sit in the seat of this comfort in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you remove wrong associations from their lives. Help them to make the right connections. Everyone that will make them, deceive them, that will make them to wreck their marriages, that will make them to make a shipwreck of their faith, take such far from them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bring into their lives men and women that will encourage and make them better in life, that will make them to accomplish their destiny and attain higher heights in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the hearts of their husbands will trust them in the name of Jesus. Give them grace to learn to be quiet, doing their work with all sincerity, with all power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I commit their children into your hands, O God Almighty. That our children are blessed. Their children, O God, will be honored. And their children will bring honor to them in the name of Jesus. Give them grace to train up these children in the fear and nurture of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And may these children never disappoint them. And these children will not disappoint their generation in the name of Jesus. Their children, O God, will be on top. They will be intelligent. They will be wonderful. They will be great children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name, O God. Glory to your name. I decree open doors for your, for your children. I pray, O God, that these doors you have opened for them, no one will shut. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen.